new section of the Photoshop course. This section is about creating shapes. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the shape tools that we've seen before. And we're also going to learn about creating custom shapes with the pen tool and the curvature tool and a lot of cool stuff uh, coming up in this section. So just a brief overview of how to create a shape in Photoshop. You probably saw this um, in a previous lesson, but you have your shape tool down here. So if you click and hover over it, you have a rectangle, rounded rectangle, which is a, round, a rectangle with rounded corners, an ellipse, a polygon, and a line tool, and then also this custom shape tool. Let's go ahead and take the rounded rectangle tool for fun. And we've got our color up here of the fill, which is the inside. Our stroke is turned off. Let's actually go ahead and turn on our stroke. And you can see, um, as we saw before, we have different views for our uh, colors. So you have previously used up here, recent colors, and also you can click in this color picker. Uh, box to open up the color picker window and you can pick a specific color. So say we want a black stroke, we can check that. Also notice there are a couple other options for the type of color at the top. We saw this white with a red slash through it. That means no, it's no color, meaning that it's going to be transparent or not there. And you can choose that for the fill or the stroke. This next one is a solid color. So that's if you want to color it. This next one is a gradient. So we'll look into that in just a minute. And then this last one is a pattern. There are some pre-built patterns that you can use uh, here, but um, you can also download or create them yourself. So let's just choose our solid color, our black. These settings for the width and height. So if you have a specific width and height in mind, say 100 pixels by 50 pixels, then you can actually create a, a shape that's exactly that shape. So if you just go down into your canvas and click and then click OK, it's going to create that shape for you. Of course, you can also just go ahead and all right, so let me undo that. And you can also create a shape just by clicking and dragging to any sort of custom size or width that you want. You'll see the aspect up here in width and height as well. The next buttons are more options. So this next one is the what will happen when you create a new shape. So will there be a new layer? Will it combine with the previous shape that you've created? You can subtract, intersect, exclude. So let me show you those really quick. So if we create a new shape, just like so, you can see that it created this new layer. If we have it on combine shapes, you can see that it actually combines these shapes and the stroke goes around the edge. So you can create some custom shapes that way. So say we go to subtract and if you have a shape layer selected, it's going to automatically actually subtract from that layer. Let's undo that. And say we want to subtract from the inside, you can just click from the inside of a shape and it will subtract from there. We can also show you intersect. So if we have two shapes that are intersecting, it will create a shape within the intersection of the lines or the shapes that you are creating. So you can create something pretty interesting there or exclude, which is kind of the opposite of the intersection. So play around with these. You can see that you can create some super custom shapes that way. There's a couple more advanced options I'm gonna skip right now. Radius though is important especially if you're using the rounded rectangle tool, this is going to adjust the radius or the curve of your edges. So a higher radius in pixels will have a more curved edge. As you can see, if I zoom in here, you can see that this top shape has a more curved edge with that 50 pixels uh, radius, whereas the bottom one has the uh, 10, it had a, I believe it was a 10 pixel radius. All of these things can be changed once you create a shape by going back to the shape tool and you can adjust them. So say we want a thicker stroke, we can do that. You have to have the shape selected in your layer panel to do that. If you wanna change the shape style to dashes, for example, you can do that. 
Um, if you want dashes, but you want more dashes, note that you need to decrease the number or the size. You can also adjust <laughs> with more options how it looks. So say uh, you want a larger gap between the dashes or a smaller gap. You can create a dash width. You can create sort of a multiple style gap. So let's actually create a higher gap. So now let's do a dash, a two dash, then a one dash, a two dash, then a one dash. So you can kind of really go crazy with how custom this is. And then also these options above align caps and corners. This will make more sense if you're drawing just a line in terms of the caps, but for a line, Right now it's on the inside edge of the shape. You can see here, if we zoom in, see how these dots are on the inside of the shape. If we go back to our stroke setting, uh, which you can get to right here, you can put it on the line itself or outside the line. So again, if you want to create some sort of, like this would be a cool little marquee sign if we change the stroke color to something like a yellow, yellowish. And then we have the inside of the stroke or the shape be maybe like a white. And then we can type in some text. Let's add a, a dark background to this. So let's just add a black background. And there you have our marquee sign in the works. We'd have to add some text and stuff, but see, you can get pretty creative with these shapes. Now let's go over the different shape uh, fill options really quickly, but let's choose a different type of shape. So we've seen the rectangle and ellipse tool. I wanna show you the polygon tool, which is a, a cool way to create a perfectly symmetrical polygon with however many sides you want. So you have all the same sort of options up here at the top that we saw before, but we also have this sides option. So if you want a polygon with three sides, what's that? That's a triangle. So if you create that shape right there, you have a three sided polygon. Say we want a hexagon, we can create that just like so. And so that's a cool way to uh, quickly create a custom shape um, or whatever shape you want with equal sides. Let's look at the fill options for these shapes really quick. So let's go to this triangle right here. And in the fill options, you saw that we have a gradient option. So by clicking that, let me move this over to the side so you can see it. You see that we now have this gradient going from dark to light, so black to white from the bottom to the top of this shape. To change the color of the gradient, double click this little box at the bottom left of the gradient and then choose a different color. So now we have red. And then to change the top one, you can double click that white little box, or it was white for me, and change it to something else. You can even create a new color point wherever you want in this line, and this will actually make a, great, a three color gradient, right? So it goes from red to blue to purple. You also have some presets up here that you can choose. Underneath these folders, you have even more presets. I mean, gr gradients are actually kind of popular now. It, it, it's funny, up until the past year or so, I would say gradients were seen as something of the past, something from like the 90s. But now a lot of people are using gradients in their graphic design. Now, note there's these other boxes at the top of the this gradient bar. Um, if you double click these, you'll see, or just click them, you'll see that it's the opacity 100%. And so if we set this to zero, for example, what happens, it makes it white. And so kind of like we've seen in our layer masks, um, the white is the, when this is set to white actually, it's set to 0% opacity. And when it's set to black or 100%, it's 100% opacity. I accidentally created another point and to get rid of a point, just drag it off to the side. 
So you can actually change the opacity. Now, when would that actually come in handy? So say we have some sort of social media graphic. I'm gonna delete these shapes. We're gonna take our rectangle tool, create a rectangle at the bottom of our, our canvas. We're gonna change the fill to a gradient. And for the top part of the gradient, we want this to actually be opaque. Or, or transparent rather. So we're gonna change the opacity to zero. So now we see that this actually fades and let's turn off the, um, well first let's turn off the stroke for this, this layer. We don't want a stroke. And now you can see that without the background on, we have this transparent gradient from the bottom to the top. So say we had some text we're gonna look at text in the next section, but say we have some text here for our name, for example, and you're putting this over a video card or something like that, you're creating some sort of video graphic, it might be nice to have some sort of gradient um, transparency at the bottom that fades into the video so the top is completely transparent, but the bottom has a little bit of trans of opaqueness so you can see the title card better. Uh, so that is a more practical demonstration of why you would use that sort of transparent gradient. Uh, really quickly, just if we go back to our fill colors and let's set this back to 100, you could change the direction of the gradient um, by changing this, turning this dial right here. Think of it as 360 degrees and it's the angle, so if you want something diagonal, you can change it. You could also change it from a linear gradient that goes from one side to the other to a radial, which goes from the inside to the out. Angle, which kind of is like a clock. It goes from, it's like a circle, and it goes from one point all around the clock, all the way to the other. Reflected, diamond, they just do different styles. Now, also say you have, uh, let's go to this radial one, but say that the circle is too small, you want it to be bigger, you can adjust the scale. So see how we have this scale drop down right here? You can increase or decrease the scale, and you could do this for any of these. So for linear or radial, and this can help you blend the gradient, make it a little bit smoother. Depending on the color choices, uh, I would say like a harsh gradient, something like this doesn't look that good, but maybe if uh, you have the scale up a little bit, it'll look even better. So that's the option for that. Let me just show you really quick if we select our pattern. Uh, this is pretty cool. You can uh, create patterns or add patterns. Uh, if there's patterns that you often use, you can actually import patterns by clicking this gear icon right here, clicking import patterns, and then finding a pattern from, or really just like an image file from your computer, and it will actually save it and create a pattern for you that you can use. And this is great if you're constantly using uh, a similar kind of style or pattern for just if we go back to our fill colors, and let's set this back to 100, you could change the the direction of the gradient um, by changing this, turning this dial right here. Think of it as 360 degrees and it's the angle. So if you want something diagonal, you can change it. You could also change it from a circles and rectangles and triangles are cool. But what if you want to create a more custom shape? Well, luckily we have a bunch of tools that give us that option. So if you go to this tool, it might look like this convert point tool for you, but if you click on it, you have a few different options. You have a pen tool, a freeform pen tool, and a curvature tool, and plus a couple other ones that will help us with these tools. Let me just quickly show you what you can do with these. So we're going to turn our fill to blue. Our stroke is still black. Now with the pen tool, what you can do is click, 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 and now we have created a closed shape. And that's typically what you'll wanna do with when creating a shape is close it, create a closed shape. So this is a quick custom triangle. Let me delete that. Let me show you what else you can do. By just clicking once, you create a sharp 
corner. But if you click and drag, it creates a rounded corner. Now we can close that shape. Now what you can do with the pen tool is if you hover over these points, these anchor points that you've created, if you click on it, it looks, or the if you see the mouse, it looks like a minus point. If you click on it, it's going to subtract that one, subtract that one. So that's how you can quickly get rid of them or you can add more back. Now say you add these two, but you want to move it around. The easiest way to do that is just to hold the command key down or control if you're on a PC and now you can move this around. So it kind of changes your, your selection tool or your pen tool to a direct selection tool where you can actually move these anchor points around. You can actually select multiple anchor points. So I'm holding the command button down and then holding shift as well to select these two points. And then just with the command button down, I hold, held down, I can now move these points and move them around. Now you'll notice that if I click on one of these points that is a curve, you see these little handles that are protruding from it. This helps us create or adjust the curve. So you can extend it, you can rotate it. So see if I extend and rotate, that creates a pretty incredible shape right there. You also have these specific add anchor point or delete anchor point tools. If for some reason you just wanna have a tool that does those things specifically. You also have this convert anchor point tool which allows you to click and drag on a sharp edged uh, corner and turn it into a curved anchor point. Cool, huh? And with this tool, you can also do the reverse. So let's go back to our pen tool. So that's the pen tool. So you can imagine creating some cool sort of wave effect or waves like so. And then you'd have to go in here and adjust the uh, angle of these, whoops. So holding down the option key actually makes your, your mouse the uh, convert anchor, anchor point tool. So if you're on here, you don't have to go change it. In this menu, you can just hold the option key and that's gonna change that into a sharp or a curved edge. So just playing around here really quick, trying to get some cool waves. All right, so you'd see this, you'd have to mess around with this a little, <laughs> a little bit more to get this to look like actually waves. But anyways, I'm gonna show you another tool that's going to make this even easier. So there's our, our waves, our weird waves. I mean, it looks like bunny ears kind of too. The next tool I wanna show you is the freeform pen tool. So this allows you to literally just draw and it will create a shape for you. It will add anchor points wherever it thinks it you want anchor points. And so that's a quick way to actually custom draw something. This would probably come out a lot better if you had a stylus and not using a mouse. And then the last tool I wanna show you is the curvature pen tool. And this is my favorite custom tool to use and it comes from Adobe Illustrator. Now what it does is it kind of intelligently creates curves for you depending on where you put your anchor points. So you can actually create some pretty custom shapes and you can see here that depending on where I put uh, the points, it will actually create a pretty good uh, wave or custom shape for us and it's just better than what I could do freehand or even with the pen tool. Now, a couple things to note, if you're just clicking once, it's going to automatically create a curve. But if you click twice or double click, that point becomes a sharp edged point, okay? So that way, let's go undo that. And then you could also double click uh, points after the fact to make them sharp or curved. So this way you can actually create a pretty dang good wave. So let's actually start from scratch and I'll show you. So if we know this point's gonna be sharp edge, then we're going to put a point at sort of the apex of the curve 
And then this is gonna be the tip of the wave. So we double click to make that a sharp edge. Again, we put it sort of at the inside apex. I don't know if that's the actual correct ter term for it. Again, curve, 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 apex, or not the apex, but the point of the wave and double click there. And that one's double click, double click, double click. So again, this was super, super quick, but out of the three of them, I would say that that bottom one with, with the curvature tool was a lot easier to use and was way better at creating waves. You know, we can now delete these top ones because those ones kind of sucked. And we can now duplicate these ones and create sort of a cool graphic with these waves going on. Let's put the biggest one in the background. This one over here. And maybe even if we take the stroke off, that might look kind of cool. If we take the stroke off, let's take all of these, take off our stroke. We could change the color of some of these, just make them subtly different shades of blue. All right, all right, let's go ahead and design our social media graphic. This one shouldn't be too difficult. We're gonna drag this rock texture down to the bottom and increase the size. So I'm holding the option button down so it si increases in scale from the center of the image. Next, I'm going to take our man on the bridge photo. I'm going to scale that down like this. Again, it's still in the center of our frame. I might bump it up a little bit in just a minute. Next, I wanna create that sort of corner graphic over here that are actually um, gradients. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. And there's lots of different ways you can do this. The easiest way is just to take a rectangle or a square like so. We're going to play with all of our different colors and everything later, but we're just going to rotate it and scale it until it's going the direction that we want. Something like so. Now let's play with the colors. We're going to turn off our stroke, selecting our stroke, turn that off. And for our fill, we're going to use a gradient. Now we can't really see what we're working on, so let's move it over there. We're going to start with some sort of blue, darker blue like this, and then go to a lighter blue. What I often like to do with our gradients is actually start, have this color for, be our starting point for our next gradient color. Now I haven't really dived into colors that deeply, but this number right here is what you call a hex code and it's the hex code for this specific color. So if I copy this and then I go to this next gradient point and paste it, it's going to pick that exact color that we chose. You'll also see that all of these numbers here are also filled out and that's another way you can pick a color. If you know, for example, the specific RGB numbers are right here, RGB, then that's another way you can plug in those numbers and it will we'll pick that color. But the hex code down here is probably the easiest. And then from here, I'm just going to increase, go somewhere, something lighter like that. Now, in terms of the angle, I actually think that angle is good because it's going from this edge of the shape to this top edge of the shape. The scale, I might increase just a little bit and I might actually make this top color a little bit brighter, something like that. So that's pretty cool, that's our top corner. Now we wanna add another corner to the bottom right, so the easiest way to do that is just hold the Option key and click and drag this to the bottom right. And you can see actually as we drag it, there are these guides that are kind of helping us align it and also space it out so it's the same sort of spacing as this one up here. You kind of can see that it kind of locks it into place at that point so that the corners are exactly, uh, exactly um, the right position. All right, so those are our 
corners. Next, what we're going to do is create that play button. So if I take my ellipse tool and create a perfect shape circle, holding down the shift button, you'll see what happens is that I've actually created a shape using the original shape settings for fill and stroke to easily copy these settings from another shape to another, to, from one to another, is what you can literally do is right click the shape you wanna copy from, go to copy shape attributes, and then on the shape you want to paste them to, just right click and choose paste shape attributes. And you see now we have this play button that has the gradient. And I think this looks good in terms of graphic design, doing something like this where you're matching the style. Uh, you might want to just switch it up and maybe rotate this 100 degrees or 90 degrees or 180 degrees um, just so that it's a little bit different. And for the play button, I'm going to drop the opacity to like 75 just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I think for this one, I actually am going to add a stroke, just like a white stroke, super thin, something like so. And instead of my overall opacity at 75, I'm going to change the fill opacity to that. And our stroke is still gonna be 100% opacity and there we have it. That stands out a little bit more than what I had created before. Now let's create the rectangle for our play button. So to do that, we're going to use the polygon tool. We're going to change the sides to three. We're just going to go ahead and turn off our stroke. The fill is gonna be white. And I'm just going to create a triangle. Now to get it to be perfectly aligned so that the left side is perpendicular, I'm holding the shift button down. And now what I'm going to do is use our align options to align the polygon to triangle to our ellipse. Selecting, bo selecting both of those with my move tool, I can horizontally and vertically align them. Now I realize I'm doing that to the canvas, so let's do to the selection. And let's do that same thing, which it actually looks the same because um, it's already if it's aligning to the canvas center center, then it's going to align to each other center center. But this doesn't look just right actually because I realize that the center of our triangle is not exactly where we want this it to be centered on the circle. So I'm gonna scale this down and just using my keyboard uh, left and right arrows, I'm just gonna move it over to the right just a little bit. And here's another option or example of where I'm going to link these layers and that becomes our play button. Now I do wanna align this to our, our canvas center vertically or horizontally rather. So I'm gonna do that. And let's just zoom out so we see our entire project. I am going to just bump up our picture there. I'm gonna move make this a little bit smaller and that's looking pretty good. Now the last thing is to create that little rectangle border for our image right here. There's again, a couple ways we can do it. We can create a stroke just for this image itself, but I'm gonna do it with a shape. So taking our rounded rectangle tool, no stroke, uh, fill, we'll change that in a second. We're going to create this shape now I realize that this is a the edges are a little bit too round. So once you do this, um, you actually have this properties panel. If you don't see that, just go to window properties. And this is sort of a live look at your shape uh, settings. And you can see here that it has the 100 pixel corners. And if we change this to 25, it will change the, the pixel or the radius of our shape. The option up here only applies to whatever new shapes you create. So if you're trying to sh change the settings uh, for the rounded corners of an existing shape, then you'll have to do that in this properties panel. So that's just another quick tip. So we're, we already have the color settings for this triangle copied. So if we just right click on our rounded tri rectangle and choose paste shape attributes, it should paste them, which it does. And if we put this underneath our man on a bridge, 
And let's just go ahead and align these to each other. So selecting both of them, we're going to center them. And now I'm just going to take my rounded rectangle and make it a little bit smaller. I'm just holding the option key down so it reduces the size from the center. So it still stays centered on this photo. I'm going to link these now. So if I move one of them, I move both of them. And the last thing though is the gradient isn't exactly what I want it to look because these other layers or these other shapes are actually rotated. The gradient is at a diagonal. And so for our rounded rectangle, I am going to go to our gradient settings. A quick way to get to that is just double clicking in the shape layer right there. And we're just going to change the angle, something like so. And that looks pretty good. So here we have what I've just created compared to our original. Looks pretty good. I actually like the play button with the stroke um, and it looks just a little bit better in my mind. I might just bump that triangle. Let's unlink this and then just bump that triangle over to the right just a little bit. Right there is pretty good. All right. So hopefully you learned a lot through